We've got loads of little frogs in our tank now and there are some real characters that I can pick out. Uh, let me see if I can show you some. There's this guy, he always seems to be doing the splits. This guy here, he was always upside down either floating on his back or on his side and when he swims he spins around in little circles. I have a feeling though that that's, um, this one's not too healthy but uh, we'll keep an eye on him seeing how he uh, develops. There's also this little guy here who has a twisted back. Now in this, I noticed this as a tadpole. His tail was bent at 90 degrees to his body and as he's developed you can kind of see this twist in his spine. So again, something that's probably not quite right there. And as you can see we've got many, many little frogs now. I think there's about 15 at the last time I counted. And they're definitely all looking a little bit hungry so we need to feed them. And as you can see we have some crickets. These ones all seem to have uh, escaped the water by climbing up the side of the tank. They're not particularly safe there I have to say. So before I talk about the crickets, let's go back a few days when I had less frogs and uh, they've only newly emerged from the water. Now what I need to feed them is something a lot smaller. Now last time out I was feeding them with aphids that I'd knocked off from a sting nettle. Now this one I found this is the best method for feeding them. I've managed to find a, a weed in the garden that was covered in aphids. You can use aphids or black fly, anything very small. And the best thing to do is just to snip off a stem and place the whole thing in the tank. And as you can see, the frogs there will notice that there are little things on the stem of the plant and they will stalk them. They will look out for the movement and then when they get close enough and they're sure that there's something there, they will launch themselves just like that and they will eat the aphids. So um, frogs will eat anything that can fit in their mouths. And if it's too big, they'll end up spitting it out and not be able to eat it. So that, to begin with, aphids are the perfect food because they are just the right size. Of course, they will get bigger and they will need to feed on bigger food. So once the frogs get a little bit bigger and they need to move on from the aphids, I feed them second in start brown crickets. These are the smallest type of crickets that I can find in my local pet shop. You can get first in star, but I believe they're special order, so, but the second seem to be perfectly sized for the bigger frogs. Some of the smaller frogs might struggle a little bit, but we can always give them more aphids to keep them going as well. So I have placed in a load of crickets into the tank now and instantly the frogs are attracted to the movement. As I've said in the previous video, the frogs will only go for live food. If something doesn't move, they don't see it. So they will only go for food that is moving. And these crickets move around a lot. They are very fast and it's actually quite the challenge for these frogs to catch them. And also another downside of the crickets in this kind of setup with the half and half setup. So half the tank is above water and the other half is below water because I also have the tadpoles as well. Uh, is that the crickets will jump around and a lot of the times they will jump into the water. Now they do have a little bit of a swimming ability and they will generally try and find the, the way to safety up to the side of the tank or back onto the rocks but a lot of the crickets will drown and unfortunately are wasted because uh, once they drown they don't move anymore and the frogs don't know that it's food and will just ignore them. So you do lose a significant portion to, uh, to the water. Uh, if you had another setup with a lot less water in, maybe you've just had the tank with just frogs in, um, it would obviously still need to be damp because the frogs need the water, but you don't need like to be able to submerge them completely. They may work better, but in this setup, it's about the best that I can do. I just have to keep putting in fresh crickets uh, once all the crickets have been eaten. So you should be able to spot one or two of the frogs are successful and others are not so much. They will go for them, but the crickets will jump out of the way. Uh, sometimes if they bite off more than they can chew, so to speak, they will uh, grab a cricket that's maybe a little bit too big for them and they'll end up spitting it out. So out here in the garden there is something else I want to show you. Looking on this plant, the natural patch, you can see it on quite a lot of the plants out here in the garden. There's this uh, little patches of foam on the plant. Maybe I'll bend this down, you can get a better look. You can see there. Now that is called cuckoo spit. And uh, if we wipe away some of this foam, 
you will see little bugs underneath. So let's do that and have a look and see what they look like. So if I take a tissue and carefully wipe away some of this, you may be able to see a creature that's made all this froth. This froth is produced by the creature hiding inside it. It sucks the sap from the plant and uses the fluid to create this froth that serves several purposes. It hides the insect, provides insulation against heat and cold, and keeps the creature moist. The froth also tastes bad, deterring predators. Running away from us a little bit. Here he is. Oh, if I can get him on this tissue, have a closer look. Oh, it's come out onto the leaf. So we can get the camera to focus. This little creature is called a frog hopper, or more accurately, this is the nymph, the juvenile form that will undergo gradual metamorphosis before reaching its adult stage. Unlike a larva, a nymph already resembles the adult apart from a lack of wings and its coloration, and it will not pupate, instead it will undergo several molts. Another name for this is the spittle bug due to the froth that the nymph produces. Adult frog hoppers are expert jumpers and leap from plant to plant. Some species can jump up to 70 centimeters vertically. This is more impressive performance relative to body weight than fleas. The frog hopper can accelerate at 4,000 meters per second over 2 millimeters as it jumps, experiencing over 400 g's of acceleration, and it can jump 100 times their own length. Okay, well let's leave him be. He can go back to his home. The frog hopper is not the only interesting thing I've spotted this week. This is the thick-legged flower beetle, also known as a false oil beetle. It is a pollinator of many open structured flowers like this oxeye daisy. The adults can be seen from April to September, but the larvae are well concealed within the dry stems of plants where they feed and grow before emerging to become adults. This one is easily identifiable as a male by its thick rear legs that give the beetle its name. The females, however, have thin legs. Well, that's all for this week, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Please come back next Sunday for some more Frog Watch. I'll see you then.